<laughs> you just heard on 2020 about doctors accused of using their own sperm to impregnate patients, including the Indiana case of Dr. Donald Klein. Some of his victims are pushing for Indiana to adopt a law that would make it illegal for doctors to do so. Call 6 Investigates' Kara Kenny spoke with them about their efforts, as well as a local fertility doctor about how couples can protect themselves from fraud. Matt White is still struggling with who his father is. Zionsville doctor Donald Klein, who inseminated his own patients without their knowledge in the 1970s and 80s. To know that my mother and all of our other mothers and the other mothers and fathers that went through this struggled through it. And to just know that someone would take advantage of that situation is just... It really makes me angry. After the Klein story hit the news in 2016, Matt learned Heather Wook is his half-sister. Both Heather and Matt's moms went to Dr. Klein for donor sperm. They believe they have at least 50 other siblings out there, many of who've reached out on Facebook after doing DNA tests. We're um, matching as close relatives on Ancestry and um, somehow mentioned the name Klein. Klein received no jail time after pleading guilty to two felony counts of obstruction of justice. He also lost his license to practice medicine. All of us though, I think felt that that wasn't really enough for the future. If this happens again, no one should have to settle for that. Critics say Indiana's laws were too weak to charge Klein with any other crime, even though he inseminated dozens of patients without their consent. Everyone is blown away when they hear that because naturally it sounds so inappropriate and we all think it should be illegal. Heather and Matt have been working to pass legislation that would allow prosecutors to charge a perpetrator with fertility fraud, a level six felony, and allow the victims to get up to $10,000 in compensation. Senator Jack Sandlin and Representative Ed Delaney have both filed bills. We're trying to first of all lay down the rules for you know whether doctors are allowed to provide their own semen for these processes. We're laying down that. The answer, of course, is no, unless there was some consent. With the DNA analysis today, uh, and people wanting to know more about you know their backgrounds and heritage, I mean, it's just been stunning. As more women wait until later in life to have children, more are seeking sperm and egg donations, which can run from hundreds to thousands of dollars. One in six Indiana couples face infertility, according to Dr. John Jarrett at the Indiana Fertility Institute. I started doing this in 1984 and at that point had the first successful IVF pregnancy in Indiana. The Institute uses only eight sperm banks across the country that are FDA approved and have to follow strict protocols that verify the donor is who the parents chose. And we provide them with a full profile so they know what they're getting and they're getting it from a reputable source. Dr. Jarrett recommends choosing a licensed endocrinologist and a sperm bank that's FDA approved. Yeah. Don't get it off Craigslist. No. Is there sperm for sale on Craigslist? Uh, isn't there everything for sale on Craigslist? Beyond sperm donation, Dr. Jarrett offers other services to help with infertility, including medications that can promote ovulation, intrauterine insemination, as well as in vitro fertilization, known as IVF, where the embryo is made in a dish. That is our uh, ultimate go-to procedure, simply because of the su success rates that we can achieve with that. We're looking at probably 60%. IVF is much more expensive. Both Matt and Heather have struggled with infertility with their own families. Heather's trying IVF and Matt can see both his children through IVF. Makes it so much clearer to me how much trust we really do put into our doctors, especially fertility doctors. The solution, they say it's to better protect couples struggling with infertility and holding violators accountable. Care Kenny, RTV6. The fertility fraud bill passed the legislature and still awaits Governor Eric Holcomb's signature.